We're so happy that you could join us. My name is Russ Littlefield and I am currently serving as president of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Lake County. Unitarian Universalism is committed to environment and environmentalism as one of the pillars of our faith. This is eloquently stated in our seventh principle, which reads that we pledge to honor the interdependent web of all existence of which we are one part. I am now going to light a chalice, which is the symbol of our faith. With the words that I have chosen to light our chalice with are the words that I ended our program with last month, the words of Father Thomas Berry. The natural world is the larger sacred community to which we belong. To be alienated from this community is to become destitute in all that makes us human. To damage this community is to diminish our own existence. Would you get your phone, please? <laughs> Tonight, we have the second in our series on beautiful Lake County. It is about managing our growth. In just a moment, we will join our panelists, but first, please give your attention to our tech team leader, Val Rosado, who will tell you how you may use some of the features of Zoom to participate in tonight's program. Val? Hi, welcome everybody. Um, we've been having a few technical difficulties today. I'm sorry you had to wait a little long in the waiting room. Um, hopefully things will go smoothly from here on out. If questions arise during the presentation, feel free to type them in the chat box. You can find the word chat somewhere around your screen, usually at the bottom or the side. And um, when you use the chat box, be sure to press enter. There's no submit button and it won't submit anything until you press enter. Um, you can also hold questions until the end of the meeting at which time um, uh, please stay muted during the meeting. And when we have the question and answer period, one of our tech team will ask you to unmute if you have your hand raised and uh, we'll take the questions from there. Uh, this program is being recorded and it will be available on YouTube uh, sometime in the next couple of days on our uh, website channel, which is UC, U, UCCLC office. And we're glad you're here tonight and we're looking forward to the presentation. Back to you, Russ. Okay, thank you, Val. <clears throat> well, we're fortunate tonight as I said, to be able to spend some time with four environmentalists well acquainted with the impact of growth on Lake County. I'm going to introduce our lead panelists for tonight's discussion, who in turn will introduce you to uh, the other panelists. Igor Emery, I'm proud to say, is a member of our Unitarian Universalist congregation. He has been an advocate for environmental and quality of life issues in Florida for more than 30 years. He is president of the Lake County Conservation Council and a member of the Citizens Advisory Committee of the Lake Sumter Metropolitan Planning Organization. He has served on the Lake County Planning and Zoning Commission on a committee of the Lake Comprehensive Plan and on advisory committees for Pear Park and Lake Griffin. And he is a member of our Unitarian Universalist congregation, as I said. Igor. 
Thank you, Russ. I really appreciate that introduction. Um, folks, we're going to be talking about some technical stuff tonight, but it's not our uh, intention to go over anybody's head. Anybody that has technical challenges uh, and has been experiencing any tonight, I will tell you that I feel your pain. Every time that I join a Zoom meeting, I have all sorts of struggles just to get uh, an image up. So we'll all work together and work through any challenges and try to cover some technical stuff. If you have any questions, I hope that you will ask them. It, it is our, our objective tonight to enable you to explain to your friends what is going on in terms of growth management in Lake County to try to persuade people uh, uh, to the importance of growth management and to try to motivate you and your neighbors and acquaintances to turn out to public meetings. And by public meetings, I mean government meetings, because that is the only way that any of us can actually have uh, some effect on a regular basis. Of course, the ultimate way is, is elections. We all have to vote. Um, it's a challenge in Lake County to make uh, changes through elections, but it does happen as one of our speakers is proof. Um, so tonight we have uh, a couple of very interesting people. Rob uh, Kelly, who's gonna follow me, is a, a longtime veteran of this effort and uh, can talk to us about the historical perspective of planning in Lake County and is a real veteran of the planning effort. Uh, Doug Shields will follow uh, Rob and will talk to us about what it is like to actually use the comprehensive plan. And that's what we're gonna focus on, the comprehensive plan, which is a document you hear us talking about a lot. But uh, Doug will talk about living with that on a regular basis uh, in his line of work. And then LaVon Silvernell, who many of you know through Trout Lake and uh, other fantastic organizations in Lake County, like Keep Lake Beautiful, um, will talk about the perspective of those of us that are in the community and how we benefit from proper planning. And then I'll come back on and try to kind of wrap it up and try to, try to tie it together, and then we'll go into the question and answers. So uh, I just want to give you a little brief history on what we're talking about. So uh, in the 70s, Florida began to grow quite substantially. Uh, this is the early days of the uh, environmental mu movement. Earth Day was beginning. There were uh, pollution issues in Lake County, like for instance, phosphate was uh, found in laundry soap and was polluting the lakes. People became very uh, motivated about these things. And we started a, a, a pollution control board in Lake County to try to look at water issues. Um, the Water Authority got started as a result of that. And so because of the, the changes in state government, the divisions being set up for the St. John's River Water Management District, that is the governments were beginning to look on basin um, management of uh, the ecosystem. People started looking at all kinds of growth issues. There was a, a, an effort in the legislature to start trying to plan better. And this is, you know, people are always looking ways for to separate us from animals. And this is one of the things that separates us from other beings on this planet is the ability for long range planning. Uh, when we do that, we all benefit. And when we don't, we all uh, understand the consequences. And I have seen Lake County's, um, shall we say, evolution of planning over the, the years. And there's been some ups and downs. And uh, I was confronted by some of the early planning that happened in Lake County because the plan seemed to come from someplace in the hidden reaches. And then a few years later, Rob Kelly and a good friend of ours, Keith Shu, got together and decided, let's do something more logical. Let's look at the situation that exists on the ground and what we really wanna do as a community and what we can really afford and let's do a better plan. And uh, Rob and Keith spent a lot of time trying to convince other people to sit down and move the plan forward. And that effort resulted in the comprehensive plan we're dealing with today. So uh, with that, I'd like to, to turn it over to Rob and let him talk about the history of comprehensive planning and his unique perspective on it. He spent a lot of time developing our plan and I'm privileged to know Rob. Uh, Rob, please take over. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Igor. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting things that you mentioned was they, that the the, the comprehensive plans seem to come from some some secret place. Uh, I got involved after you got involved, but what I have learned and what I learned through the process was they actually came from back rooms full of cigar smoke. And it was many of the developers and other people with uh, land use attorneys putting them together and then giving them to our county commissioners to uh, to approve. So it was, you know, it was the days of the good old boys when 
when Lake County was more of the wild, wild west than it is now. Um, I actually got involved in 2004. I live in an area in Lake County called the Green Swamp Area of Critical State Concern. It is uh, one of the, it's the second largest intact ecosystem in Florida. The first largest being uh, uh, the Everglades. And not too many people know that the Green Swamp is the second largest eco ecosystem intact in Florida. And it, uh, a large part of that is in South Lake County and spans over uh, three or four counties. Four rivers actually start in the Green Swamp um, and feed north and south into Tampa and into Orlando. So uh, this area is an area that provides, a, it's got a high, it's what's called a high potential metric and it provides pressure on the ground to push the water out, the groundwater down and out to both coasts. So uh, both the, the Tampa coast and the Orlando area get a significant amount of water from uh, the potentiometric high in the area of the Green Swamp. So when the city of Groveland started to expand into the Green Swamp, uh, which is slated mostly for one to five to uh, one house per five acres, one house per 10 acres, one house per 20 acres. And in the late 2000 or early 2000s, I guess, 2003, 2004, uh, the big push uh, before the 2008 crash, um, Groveland was ex wanted to expand into the green swamp at four houses per acre without really too much regard for for the environmental aspect of, of our treasure that we have. Um, and I got involved because it was going to affect part of my life and another big group of residents here. Uh, we ended up having a citizens, a citizens initiative in Groveland where all of the voters got to vote uh, on the comprehensive plan amendment for Groveland to say, do we want to preserve the green swamp and the densities that are there, or do we want to be able to allow Groveland to expand into it with four houses per acre and just you know create the usual urban city? And it passed by about eighty percent um, to have it preserved and have Groveland you know not come into uh, to come into the green swamp. So that uh, ensued a legal challenge by. Uh, by the usual cast of people that didn't want that wanted to be able to expand, uh, and we ended up fighting a two or three year battle with Groveland, and and I would say that we were pretty successful with it, and that we had a uh, uh, we had we made an agreement with Groveland that they would not expand into it, um, and uh, they have not expanded into it in fifteen years now since then. So. That was 2004, 2005. After that, I got involved with comprehensive plan at the county level to try to prevent and try to, to prevent that from happening again and try to uh, put some more sense into the process and met Kishu and met Igor and, and a number of other people. So I ended up becoming, um, I, I was appointed by one of the county commissioners to the local planning agency for the county uh, at the time when they were just beginning to create their 2030 plan, 2030 comprehensive plan. Um, I was a panel of seven, was on the a local planning agency or LPA for four years. We did uh, more than 250, probably more than 300 public meetings uh, in Tavares and around the county and um, ended up finishing up with creating this new 2030 comprehensive plan in. 2009, it was adopted by the County Commission in 2010, and, um, and we've been working with that since. So what I thought I would do uh, for the remainder of my time then is, uh, there's an organization called Thousand Friends of Florida, which if you don't know what they are, I, I encourage you to, to look up Thousand Friends of Florida. They're a, a huge, a very good influence on Florida. They put together a great, a great presentation of the comprehensive plan like to share that and then I'm going to quickly share with you the different aspects of a comprehensive plan and how zoning kind of lays on top of that and through it I hope you'll kind of understand where to get involved in the process and why it's important to get into the process early. So I'm going to grab a screen share here and see if I can make this work correctly. And 
All right, let's see. Can you see that? Somebody give me a yes that they could see that? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. All right. So this presentation was put together by uh, Charles Patterson, a thousand friends of Florida. And uh, I have no shame in stealing it from him and using it because it's a great presentation. So um, I'll start out with uh, just showing this is probably many of us have felt this feeling before, but this was the result of uh, 2000, 2011 Community Planning Act, which updated some of the laws in Florida. Um, and uh, I don't, if, if everybody remembers what one hour developing was at the drugstore for our film, well, this, this gave us a, a, a new, uh, new feeling for what one hour developing is all about. And some of the, some of the things since 2008 have been softened up, and I think Igor and others will talk about that today. Uh, so it makes it makes it easier to get one hour developing in, in the state instead of it was a little bit harder earlier before 2011. And uh, another one where you know I see this every day down at the down in uh, South Lake County. Coming soon, they have they have great names for all the subdivisions that we see coming: the Pines or Pine Vista or, or so forth, and then they promptly uh, plow everything down to create their subdivision. So um, here's another, another good one. We, there's no lack, of, uh, there's no lack of, of good cartoons for the lake, for, uh, for comprehensive planning in Florida and how, how it's been handled uh, over time. Sometimes it's, it's handled well, but most of the time it's pretty challenging. So you've got the uh, the humans over there on the right sand. I told you we shouldn't have built so close to the Everglades or uh, all the alligators are having fun now. So um, so probably not everybody understands what a comprehensive plan is. It's, it's This is a lot of very technical information. I'm gonna to try to keep it very high level and um, and then show you a couple things that might might stitch uh, stitch the ideas together. So under Florida law, each city and county must develop what's called a comprehensive plan, which is like the business plan for that entity to guide future development, deal with problems associated with the use and development of land, promote public health and safety, protect human, environmental, and social and economic resources. Um, any development approval in Lake County or in a city who has a comprehensive plan um, or in other counties must be consistent with their plan. Um, and each one of those plans can, can be different and they can conflict with each other. So it gets, uh, it gets pretty complicated and pretty interesting. Um, typically a good comprehensive plan will be a time frame of you know, more than 10 years. Uh, typically, we, you know, with the effort that gets put into creating them, they need to be 20 years to 30 years. So um, when we did ours in 2010, it was approved. Uh, it was a 2030 comprehensive plan. So the Lake County plan is a 20 year plan right now. Uh, and, and I'm amazed at how quickly 2030 is coming up now. Um, each Comprehensive plan includes a lot of different parts and pieces that go together. Uh, they have elements with goals, uh, things that deal with schools, things that deal with water, things that deal with uh, other infrastructure, uh, schools, roads, and the objectives and policies identify how the local government's going to accomplish the intent of each element. Um, there are required elements and there are optional elements. So local governments can kind of choose some things that are optional to include in there and, and, and some may choose not to include those optional elements. For instance, you know, believe it or not, schools and roads are optional elements now since 2011. Uh, before 2011, schools and roads were not optional elements. So some counties have chose not to put things like roads and schools in there and they don't effectively deal with those issues when new developments come up or when they're, uh, when they're proposed. There's a lot of data and analysis that is got to stand behind these decisions and meaningful you know, measures. Um, so they've got to be able to justify the decisions they're making. 
Um, and so some of those elements, again, are capital improvements, future land use, uh, some of the different elements are called capital improvements, future land use, transportation, sanitary, sewer, water, waste, drainage, groundwater, and so forth. So one of the key parts of a comprehensive plan is a future land use map. Shortened up, we call it a flume. Um, they define each, each piece of property in the county is defined in a comprehensive plan on, on what, uh, what density it will be allowed for future land use and uh, what types of things will be allowed in each one of those future land uses. So the overall goal is to discourage urban sprawl. Um, different people have different definitions of what urban sprawl is. So, um, but that's, that's the overall intent is to try to keep things in, in compact, keep the cities urban, keep, keep growth. You know, there's appropriate places for growth in, in cities and so forth and higher density. There's appropriate places for higher density and there's appropriate places for low density and keeping things uh, rural lifestyles. So we owe it to the residents that live in Lake County to be able to provide an urban lifestyle or, or a rural lifestyle, depending on, on what they like. Some of, the, uh, some of the concurrency issues that take place inside a comprehensive plan, it has to be designed to uh, provide uh, infrastructure at the same time as development, water, sewer, solid waste, schools, which are optional, and roads are optional to be uh, uh, to be available at the time of development. Um, developers sometimes have to pay proportionate share, so their share of what a road might cost to improve, and sometimes roads can't be improved. So, you know, you have to figure out whether developments take place in certain areas or not. Um, and at the end. The comprehensive plan after it gets created gets sent out to a big group of consultants that study it and look at it and determine whether it's financially feasible and whether the county is at the end of this 2030 time frame is going to be able to provide services with the design of the county um, with the revenue it's going to take in from the design of the county through taxes. Um, this is another another funny uh, cartoon that's done by Packwood that we see a lot from uh, South Florida, and uh, you know a lot of times by the time people buy houses, move into an area, and figure out uh, maybe where they moved and what the real deal is, um, it's too late and they get you know they're they're flooded all the time and so forth. So. Um, that's what planning and zoning tries to keep that from happening, or it's supposed to. Um, so the comprehensive plan must be amended if the government desires, desires to change it. So if they've got to go through public meetings, um, post notices, and um, they've got to amend it to make sure that whatever development they want to propose is going to be consistent with the plan that they're going to change. So. Um, and they can change it a number of different ways. They can do large scale plan amendments, which is, which is uh, reviewed at the state level. Um, they can do um, uh, smaller, let's see, they, they have uh, an expedited review process. They've got a state coordinated review process and they've got small scale amendments. Um, Igor, you can probably attest to this, and, and Doug, um, you can attest to this too, not just since you've been a, the uh, county commissioner, but for the seven or eight years that you've been working on, on issues before becoming a commissioner, but um, you know, you've got Batman, the good guy, dealing with, you know, hoping with uh, growth, growth management and trying to, trying to keep things reasonable and logical and everybody you know, there's a lot of developments to say, let's, let's compromise, let's compromise. Um, so Doug's not one of these, but typically we see the Cape Crusader contending with the cantankerous commissioners, right? Now Doug gets to uh, contend with the other cantankerous commissioners. So with uh, expedited reviews, they have local transmissions to the state. They can look at them within 10 days. Um, this, the county adopts a transmittal, the state reviews it within 10 days, it comes back, 
and it can be uh, put in place very quickly. And then they've got a state coordinated um, review, which is much longer, much more involved with things like sector plans uh, and, and bigger scale amendment changes. Um, and then small scale amendments that are less than 10 acres typically can be changed uh, more easily. These can become effective 30 days after adoption and so forth. So there's, there's other important programs uh, within the comprehensive plan. We have, uh, we have the area of critical state concern for the green swamp. Other areas of critical state concern include um, the Everglades, actually include the Keys, because you know, there's a lot of issues down in the Keys and, and sector plans, rural land stewardship areas. Um, and then they've got these ear processes uh, for changing things. So a lot of different aspects that go into it. Let's see, we'll skip through that. And um, when it goes up to the state, when a comprehensive plan change goes up to the state, you know, different agencies look at it, look through it, and are able to comment on it. And unless we are really advocating for or against a comprehensive plan change, the Department of State, uh, you know, all of the departments up there um, may or may not do a very thorough job of reviewing and, and uh, and commenting and really commenting and reviewing in a sense of what's relative, what's good for Lake County. So they're in a bubble up in Tallahassee, they review things, send it back from strictly a planning point of view, but they really don't have a feel for, uh, for what the community wants here. So, after the plans are done, the local governments have to um, implement it through land development regulations, which are, are now zoning. And so zoning is a layer that sits on top of comprehensive planning. Um, that defines subdivisions, zoning, compatibility, you know, well fields, signs, and so forth. And, um, you know, during that process of creating those, the local planning agency conducts hearings and so forth and, and so on. Um, so what I wanted to get to is the citizens' participation in comprehensive plan is incredibly important. Um, Florida law requires opportunities for public participation. Um, first, a government must give adequate public notice, such as publishing notices in a local newspaper, putting up signs out next to the road, um, and they must be allowed to participate in the meetings and hearings. Our experience is that, and I think all of our experience, Igor and Keith and, and Doug's been your experience, once a sign goes up on the side of the road, there's so many things that have happened behind the scenes that we're so far behind um, that it's difficult to to get in, it's not difficult to get involved, but you just have twice as much work to get involved to make a difference at that point. So we really need to be involved with staff at the county, with county commissioners to understand what, what kind of uh, changes, what kind of requests, what kind of developments are coming forward before they even get into, uh, before they even get into the notice type of stage. Um, to challenge things, you've got to have certain types of standing, you've got to be an affected person. Um, you can challenge things a number of different ways, but the best way to be able to, to have an impact on whether you want a change in a comprehensive plan, whether you want to add something to a comprehensive plan or keep a, a change from happening that might be a bad change um, is to be involved early on in the process. Um, so what I think, and Doug, you can probably help with this, you know, going forward. And, and I really hadn't thought about this before uh, uh, as we've talked before, but, you know, the planning bill of rights. So we need to have really, really need to put together a planning bill of rights where the developer or new project prepares a, a citizen participation plan. Uh, it notifies the property owner's neighborhood and conducts citizen workshops to attain public input. Um, the plan can't be revised before some of the meetings, so they can't play 
uh, games of changing things and changing things and, and, and keeping people confused. And then a really big idea might be to have a supermajority vote of the county commissioners is required for all comprehensive plan amendments. So instead of a, a simple majority of three out of five, um, maybe it should be four out of five, a supermajority to be able to change a comprehensive plan because our business plan is, is our business plan. And if we're just changing it because somebody comes in and, and, and wants to change it and has, uh, has influence, then we're not really getting what we need as a county. Um, and again, the Bill of Rights might include something that says no free density uh, provision, meaning that rural, are, that rural lands shouldn't just be a holding bin for urban lands. Uh, they should only be converted uh, if, if there's significant public benefit. Um, so I'm going to quickly just show, and I know I'm, I'm going longer than what I supposed to go here. I'm just going to quickly show what a comprehensive plan looks like, and then um, and then I will pass it on to Doug for number two here. So these are all of the elements that are, let's see if I can get this here. These are all the elements that are in a comprehensive plan. And some of these are hundreds and hundreds of pages long. Um, you've got You've got data and inventory and analysis at the bottom that provides the rationale for everything up above. We've got the Wakiva study area that's in the north that many of you are familiar with. Um, Keith was, was just awesome with helping to put together, you know, with putting together a lot of the Wakiva study stuff. Um, and then the main one that we're looking at is we're going to click on the adopted future land use or the flume. So this is the document that shows all of the density that's been set up in Lake County uh, in all the different types of land use categories. So here, if I start in the South, which I know real well, where you see the green and the olive colors, that is um, um, green swamp rural, uh, green swamp, which is the light green, which is one, one house per acre, one, one house per five acres. The light green is one house per 10 acres. The uh, olive or yellow is one house per 20 acres, you can see. So that's how this whole area is defined. If we come up to the Wakaiva area, you can see the protection area is defined with, you know, one, one to five through one to 10, to one to 40 actually up in Wakaiva. Uh, and we try to create different categories into Ocala for the national park and so forth with bear population. Um, and then you've got Eustis, Tavares, Mount Dora, all of the different colors, the lighter colors as you become more orange and red, become more urban. Um, and each piece of land, we went through each piece of land in Lake County and assigned it. Some of them are, had already had the same category assigned and we just confirmed that was the correct one. And then uh, if others were kind of inconsistent with what was going on in the area, because it had been kind of messed with in the past, then we made it consistent with what was going on in the area. So this shows, you know, from a high level, the, the comprehensive plan or the flume is a high level. Here's the density that's gonna go in each area in the future. These are the things, there's generally some things that can happen uh, in those future land uses, but it's not super specific and super technical yet. Um, when you get to that portion of it, you get into zoning, which actually shows each zoning district defines each zoning district. So here you've got one to 40 in Wakaiva, one to 20 in Wakaiva, You've got each one of these residential districts for ranchettes, agriculture, residential, R6, R7, R10, commercial districts and so forth. And then a matrix gets put together for, let's see, turn that off, move this up a little bit.
for each land use category, what zoning districts apply. So what zoning can you have in, for instance, a core conservation for green swamp? Well, you can have a one through 20, you can have a PUD that fits that density, and you can have a community facilities district called a CFD, but all have to fit the densities of the, of the future land use that's on the left. So as we go up to more, uh, if, uh, Mount Plymouth Sorrento, and you've got some densities defined on the left in the flume, which is the high level. And then on the right, you've got uh, the zoning categories that can fit into that. Wakiva River Protection Area, A1 through 20, 1 through 40, CFDs. And each one of these are defined in, in, in an incredible amount of detail inside the plan. Um, so when developers come in and they want to um, turn off screen sharing here, when developers come in and they say, we want to do a development that is five or uh, four houses per acre uh, and the land is in a future land use of one house per five acres, you know, they've got to increase that by four or five times. Uh, and go through this comprehensive planning process. So if, if citizens get involved early on, they can have a very big impact on whether or not that process moves forward uh, for converting that area of Lake County to a density or that's higher that might not, be, uh, might not be appropriate for that area, for that area. But the people that want to develop it can typically purchase the land for cheaper than they can in other areas because it is low density, it's designated as low density. So the value that, you know, somebody might perceive it to be a lower value, but once they can buy that for the lower cost and increase it in value, sell off the houses and make a tremendous amount of money versus going to buy that same hundred acres in an urban area that is already defined as the higher density. So that's the challenges. Um, I would encourage everybody to, to, to be involved early in the process and attend the meetings because, and, and really communicate social media and email right now uh, with, with some of the different groups that Igor has gotten the Conservation Council restarted. Uh, there's one down here called Keep Claremont Rural that's, you know, we've got a couple of thousand people that are involved with that, you know, 1500 or so. Um, but if the county staff and the county commissioners understand what the residents want uh, and, and they hear from us, they act differently than if they don't hear from us and they only hear what the developer wants. So um, with that, I'll conclude my portion. Sorry for going longer than I should have. And uh, I will pass it off to, um, uh, to Doug, uh, our new county commissioner, not, not new anymore, five months in, I guess. And uh, not sure, I, I met Doug a few years ago. He was involved with Keep Claremont Rural and fighting some development issues here in South Lake. And uh, he's done a tremendous job uh, down here in South Lake. He's got a lot more influence now throughout the county. And uh, he ran for county commission you know, last year and, and, and beat the incumbent by 10% who had been there for what, eight years, and uh, has, has done a great job so far. So, Doug, off to you. Unmute, Doug, Doug, you need to unmute. Yeah, I'm trying. There we go. There you go. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate uh, that segue. Um, yeah, so I, I, I come at this from a, a concerned citizen standpoint. I moved down here a dozen years or so ago. And uh, I live on a nice little water ski lake, not too far from Rob, actually, just a little to the east of him, right on the edge of the green swamp. And uh, <clears throat> there's maybe, it's a 90 acre lake and halfway down the west side of the lake, there was six or seven houses. And so when I bought the house, I asked the realtor, you know, what's gonna happen with the, the, the property, you know, south of me, it's the other half of the, the west side of the lake. And, uh, they said, oh, the comprehensive plan shows, you know, another five or six houses. I said, oh, that's great. So then one day I'm driving up the driveway and I see the, the, the dreaded, you know, yellow 
comprehensive land use uh, uh, amendments. So I was an architect and said, what's that? And he says, oh, you need to get on that. So called the county, called my realtor, started you know digging into it. And I find out that uh, the developer who owned it, um, guy lives in France, I think, wanted to put in 400 houses where there was supposed to be a handful. And uh, so I'm like, oh, that's not good. So we, I, 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 you know, got all the neighbors on the lake in my living room and uh, said, what are we gonna do about this? And so we started our, our plan of attack to see if we could kill it. And uh, long and short of it, we, we did wind up getting it killed barely. Um, and, and Tim Sullivan, who was the district one uh, commissioner at the time, guy I replaced, he voted for the 400 houses. And so that was the, the, the beginning of, of, of my uh, journey into becoming a county commissioner and running for office. So, and, and I kept, but I kept asking, you know, Commissioner Campione and, and, and you know, some others, um, I said, I, I don't understand this whole process. I didn't know Rob at the time, but as you can see, there was a tremendous amount of work put, in, put into the comprehensive plan to say how we were gonna develop the county. And they just tossed it right out. Like it, like it didn't even happen. And, and I, you know, and I'm a business guy. So, when, you know, I would write a business plan or the, in the staff, we would write a business plan together. And it's, 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 it's actually a very good management tool, especially I had a tech company in the mid nineties. And uh, so, so, you know, one of my employees would run in and say, uh, Doug, there's this, you know, shiny new ob object. We got to go chase this. Look how cool this is. And I'd say, well, is it in the business plan? They said, no. So, well, then was the business plan, did we miss something when we wrote the business plan? Some assumption was wrong. Or was the business plan overtaken by events and we need to take it off the shelf and, 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 and readjust? And in, invariably, they, you know, stare at their shoes and, you know, walk out of my, of my office. So, so I expected the county comprehensive plan to, to act like that. But as it turns out, it, it, it's not being enforced, you know, you know you know, not, there was no change to the road out here. They didn't four lane it. There, there, you know, the, the the school's still out of capacity nearby. There were no changes to the infrastructure. So why would you change the plan? And so I sort of fell on deaf ears, other than Commissioner Parks, um, who I'm a big fan of. And and uh, so we beat that one back. And, and and then my phone started ringing and said, "Hey, you beat that one back. Could you help us on this one? Help us on that one. We'd win some. We'd lose some." lot of stuff in the green swamp which is right near me and then sort of the last straw was when uh they put 29 homes on 29 acres in the green swamp on Monta Vista and I found out Commissioner Sullivan was running on a post and I was like oh crap I gotta exit retirement and her politics and uh so that's what I did and uh thanks to, to Rob and luckily I, I met him along the way and he had some a lot of experience that of course I didn't have and uh so now I'm on the inside and which is kind of nice because I got a seat at the table, which I didn't have before. And it's also nice that, you know, Kirby Smith got in because um, I think he's just bringing in some great experience and he's very thoughtful. He's researches everything. And of course, you know, Commissioner Parks, who went from sort of being on the outside in the last regime, and he's an environmentalist, um, he's now the chair. And so we are in a way better position as a county commission right now to do good stuff than, than we've been in the last, well, ever since I've lived here. So that's, that's the good news. The bad news is the, the pressures are getting worse and worse. As you all know, the, the people are just moving in in droves. The land is cheap compared to Orlando. Our impact fees are half of what they are in Orange County. And so, you know, the pressure to come in, the cities are wanting to expand. We've got Eustis on a mad tear, trying to expand through one of our parks and all the residents are up in Thrill Hill. They're asking for protection because they don't have any standing. There's another one, big expansion of Leesburg up on, on 27. Uh, and apparently it's in their, their regular, their, I'm learning this stuff. So I thought all the properties had to be contiguous if they were gonna keep you know, expanding the city. But as it turns out, if there was a boundary agreement made years and years ago, they can 
hopscotch over a piece of county land and grab a chunk of land and incorporate it. Um, and I don't know if everybody knows this, but the county 40, 50 years ago decided not to do water and sewer. So, so we're really limited on what we can do as far as workforce housing and, and recruiting businesses. We, we need the cities, we have to have the cities because we don't have those services uh, for workforce housing, right? And, 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 and uh, recruiting companies. So, so the cities are cri critical, but then when you have these residents in the unincorporated areas thinking they move to their little slice of paradise and all of a sudden here comes the city right next door and there's you know 4,000 homes going in on what used to be you know farmland. So tremendous pressure going on right now. And of course, underlying all that stuff is years ago, for whatever reason, the county commission waived impact fees. And so that caused a bunch of development come in with no way to pay for the roads, the schools, you know, pick a thing. And so now we're left, we're under, we're under schooled, under roaded, <laughs> not a word, but we, we're, we're, we're in a pickle. And, and, and the business community is asking, is asking for a, a tax hike. It's crazy. I've never lived in a place where the business community wasn't the most conservative, you know, piece of the, of, of the, of the puzzle in, in, in the community. But they know we've got to have the roads. If, if I can't drive to a local business in, in Claremont because the roads stink or the, there's a traffic jam, I'll just buy it on Amazon. Right, so they they get that they they, they want our, you know the businesses to thrive, and they're also asking for the trails to get done, which is wonderful um, because I I think the trails are a huge economic driver, and so I'm I'm pushing on that as hard as I can. But but yeah, this this uh, this growth thing is uh, it, it it's tough. And I, I Rob, I really like that one slide on you know the super majority, right? If I could get that. If I could get that through, we got to talk about that later, but I, I would like to pitch that to the, uh, well, I probably can't get it through now. I probably have three votes. I need one more, but, but um, you know, cause we have one commissioner who's like, well, it's your property rights, do whatever you want. Uh, and, and we have another who will decide at, at the moment. So, but I, I think that's, that would be, really good to have a, a super majority to change the comp plan. I think that's a great idea or, you know, put it to a vote. Um, you know, there, there's stuff can get on the ballot, you know, if, it, if something's really huge. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's my experience and, and, and why I'm here. And, um, you know, my, my email is, is, uh, is out there, you know, you can contact me. The other thing I should mention is the, the county did launch a new, um, Jennifer Hodges didn't uh, launch a new information page. So if you want to figure out where growth is and what's happening in the county, you see plows or you're wondering about a certain piece of property or you see a sign. If you go to the Lake County website and, and you can look for it's something like development in my area, um, you can then go find out what's going on near you. Um, so it's a, a really valuable tool that, that, that just got launched. Uh, and to be helpful to a lot of people. Hey, hey, Doug, can you take a moment to talk about um, what it's like for you as a commissioner to live with the comprehensive plan? Do you enjoy this this kind of ad hoc decision making, or would you like to see something that's um, more laid out already? I think it's ridiculous. I think we have a plan, and and why I, I still don't understand why staff would sit down with somebody say okay we're going to allow you to make an exception to the plan or at least give it to the commissioners it then goes to planning and zoning who always approves everything almost everything then it comes to the county commissioners and now we're sitting in the middle of a war zone between the developers and the residents and we're negotiating in real time especially if it's like a pud on trying to make all sides happy it's it's a nightmare, <laughs> quite honestly. So I would I would much rather see it handled by staff. You know, follow the plan unless there's been a, a material change to the assumptions, right? Or, or or the infrastructure or or something. Otherwise, don't bring it to us. And I and I'm and I'm, I I you know I feel like I'm just beating my head against the wall right now. I I can't seem to get 
through to people. And I was talking to a land use attorney who said that this is kind of unique to Lake County. He does work in some other counties. And he says, if, if the comp plan says A, they don't ask for B. They just assume A is, is the letter of the law and, and they leave it. But here it's it's got no teeth for some reason. And, and so somebody mentioned going back and fixing, maybe Rob, fixing the zoning that's underneath the comp plan. And there's the, this, this, this worry that we're taking people's rights away. We're gonna move it from R6 to R3. Well, the rights were already taken away when it got moved to the, you know, when we wrote the comprehensive plan. So that's a weird thing we're in too. So I, I, I would love to get it fixed before I leave. Um, but probably Commissioner Parks is the guy to, to you know, figure out how to, to how, how to make some permanent change to the process because he's, you know, got way more experience than I do. And, you know, he, he, he's a planner, you know. Igor, is this time for questions? No, no, we need to we need to let Levon speak. And so uh, I'd like to see if Levon is able to uh, communicate with us. Uh, she has a unique perspective as a citizen activist and can talk to us about how the comprehensive plan is supposed to, to be used to benefit individual citizens. Levon, are you on? I hope so. Can you hear me? I hear you well, and I'll turn it over to Levon <laughs> Silvernell. Okay. Um, the poltergeist that follows me everywhere has been here today. And um, so we jury rigged this. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have lived in Lake County since 1986. For most of that time, I worked in Orange County. I was married, I had kids and I was not involved until um, Lake County decided they wanted to pave our road. We live on a dirt road and we liked it that way. Road development, my mom who had dementia could walk on the road without our being worried worrying about her being run down. Um, so we thought it's being paved. Um, we lost that battle, even though it was a friendly green um, BCC then. Um, but what we got was traffic calming devices on our little very rural road out in the middle of nowhere. So it taught me that if I, if I fought, because I went to meetings and I wrote letters, that if I, if I tried, I could make a difference. So. Uh, life went on. I was divorced and could do things that I enjoyed. So I got reinvolved with like Judy Berry Native Plant Society, started volunteering at Trout Lake and ended up working at Trout Lake. So I had um, total immersion in all things natural and learned a lot myself. They say the best way to um, learn something is to teach it. So I certainly learned a lot. And as part of um, the still and very involved with like Beauty Berry Native Plant Society was at a board of county commissioners meeting to have um, October dedicated as um, wildflower month in Lake County or that's not the word, a, pro a proclamation issue. Anyway, just coincidentally, while I was there, they voted on a new um, landscaping ordinance. Um, Sean objected, he, he tried to change the percentage of a lawn that could be inside because um, turf, and I'll talk about turf more later, but it's terribly, the fertilizer, the um, nutrients, the chemicals are terribly detrimental to our water quality as well as quantity. So he was trying to push for less side. Um, he finally gave up and said, okay, let's just go ahead and vote on it and we'll come back and look at it again later. Okay, that was the end of that. Um, a few years later, maybe a couple, maybe more, maybe lots more. Anyway, later, um, I again was in a BCC meeting for a proclamation and as luck would have it, they were voting on the fertilizer ordinance that the state had mandated. Each county um, tightened up their fertilizer ordinance if they were in one of the spring sheds and we're in um, Silver Springs, what was for Silver Springs spring shed. Anyway, they were gonna vote on the minimum standards again that the state had approved because they couldn't come to consensus. And I set my little card up there and I ran up and said, wait a minute, you said that before and you still haven't looked at the, the landscape ordinance again. So they sent it to um, Keep Lake County Beautiful to make a recommendation to the board. Um, I, at that time was on Keep Lake County Beautiful and so I was able to help to bring in speakers and the Key Plate County Board voted unanimously 
for the more stringent fertilizer ordinance we have now. Now, how much good that fertilizer ordinance is doing, I really don't know because I find that many people I talk to don't even know it exists. But at least it's on the books and maybe the county is encouraged encouraging it to be enforced more than I think they are, but that's a whole other issue. So I have a PowerPoint. I'm going to try to get through it. I got my PowerPoint. Okay, so um, we've had a lot of talk about the comprehensive plan, and the reason I wanted it up is that, um, and I have it in bold, is protect the character and quality of life in Lake County and promote the conservation and preservation of Lake County's natural and cultural resources. It's in the plan, it's words we can quote because that does make a difference. And then there's other things about the priorities that natural areas are a priority in Lake County. Um, I still go to Board of County Commissioner meetings fairly often, I am retired now and I am, am very busy. I, when I try to get people to come and help me, they go, but I'm busy. And well, you can't be any busier than I am. I have a son who can't drive, he's developmentally different. I have five acres of my own. I volunteer at Discovery Gardens. I could go on, um, but I won't. But so busyness is not an excuse. Anyway, so I go to meetings. Um, when I'm at meetings, I hear often hear individuals who are having their toes stepped on for one reason or another, and that's what this next slide is about. Um, there's a gun range that was terribly stressful for the neighbors. You can only imagine um, a new cell tower, and that's a really attractive cell tower that looks like a tree. That they have one of those on Sugarloaf Mountain, go figure, it's a very affluent area. It may even be on the Orange County side, I don't know, because it really sticks up there. It took me a while to figure out what it was. And then um, there's roads. I, I feel so sorry for those people. One man had been um, developing his property for scrub days, and now they're putting a road, a, you know, four-lane road through the right the front of his property. would have been so much better if they'd taken it all. But, it, you know, there's no no um quality of life is not given dollars and cents it doesn't count for dollars and cents so it has no value and it's not taken into the equation but it's extremely stressful for people okay so but i don't believe in fighting i believe in trying to problem solve um i call the um in this slide giving people a helping hand so that's what i've tried to do with the county commission um sean did ask me to help with the tree ordinance for what good it was, um, I, I added my impact. What I have, what I believe and what I see in our culture and what I see with the BCC is it's money that counts. Economic growth is the silver ring on the um, merry-go-round that our Board of County Commissioners feels obligated to put that as the top priority. That's the bus that drives, you know, the County Commission everywhere. <laughs> so, um, we. The, the citizens need to present an alternative argument for healthy balanced growth with the necessary open spaces. In the plan, it's an argument we can use. Um, everybody knows what development means, but um, they may not realize what we're talking about when we talk about open space. Um, in the, the slide that I hope you're looking at now with the houses and the trees and, and the green space to the side, I'm forgetting to say move ahead, so you're probably not even with me. Can you find that I'm on one? that slide now? Okay, that that on your right hand side, that looks like green space. It's nice and green, but it's not. That is a golf course. Golf courses are, are watered and are using a lot of water as our, our turf lawn. Um, they're fertilized, they're pesticided. So the water quantity and quality are being impacted by that. The development on the left, um, actually is, is probably less harmful than the golf course because they have such small lots they can't be used against much water. And because they're on small lots, they're probably on city septic and sewers. So they're probably not impacting our water supply um, as much as the golf course is. The middle, the middle, you know, with the nice, um, not even sure what, kind, oh, cypress trees. Um, that is obviously, um, that area would be considered a green space. It's, while it still has some lawn and it's still a pleasant place to walk, it would be considered open space and would account would count towards the open space in the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan has a certain percentage of density and a certain percentage of open space. To me, that's like an equation that we should be balancing. Unfortunately, in BC 
CCC meetings that I've attended recently, um, that is not taken. That that's not the same equation that the commissioners are working with. They will increase density, which isn't all can be a good thing. Um, they approved a, a development in the last couple of weeks that has workforce housing, which is for people of not really lower income people like policemen and teachers who don't make a whole lot of money, but, you know, obviously need housing too. So it has, approving the higher density um, wasn't, from my point of view, the problem, but they also decreased the amount of open space that the development was required to have. From my point of view, they should have increased the amount of open space because they were building more densely. Um, and that's certainly something that I think could be looked at in future planning. Um, so again, um, the Let's definition the of open, open space, space slide. Yep, the open space slide. Um, that it's land that's undeveloped or minimally developed. When they did the development that Doug was talking about, that very creatively um, put open space into a homeowner's deeded lot, they, they, it was part of a deeded lot. So from my point of view, it was while they said they could do anything on it but build a structure, if they're um, fertilizing and mowing and um, treating it with chemicals, that is no longer open space. And I, and I said that to the commissioners. They ignored me. But at least I tried. Um, so, and there are other requirements for open space. Um, it, anyway, I'm not going to try to do all of it because I don't have time. But it's in the comprehensive plan. And I will say that it's very difficult to find the, the comprehensive plan or, or to, the comprehensive plan is almost moot. Our comprehensive plan, the early amendments are included in the plan. And I did find one that had amendments up to, I think, 2018. That was the, the furthest I could find that has amendments. I was looking at Orange County because I've done a lot of Googling since I've been trying to get ready for this. And I found Orange County's comprehensive plan, they have the amendments included as part of the documentation, and they are current up to 2021. And that is something that I think that Lake County should be more aggressive. I know the planning and zoning still feels overworked, but um, that comprehensive plan should be up to date so that citizens know what it really is saying. Because every time they, they want to do something a little different, the comprehensive plan is just amended. OK, so open space provides environmental services. What are environmental services? Environmental services have dollars and cents value. Since our commissioners care about economics um, and feel that that's their primary mandate as a commissioner is, is the economic health of Lake County. That's the way it, it appears to me. Um, these are some valuable services that natural areas provide. The first one, provisioning, is not one that I'd really, that we, that I'm focusing on. For one thing, um, those minerals like sand are one of the economic services that environmental areas can provide, and I just assume we didn't look at that one. But that middle one, the regulating, the cleaning the air, um, the tree ordinance, when I was working with it, um, after the hurricanes, everybody became really nervous about having big trees in their yard. It's so much easier for develop developers to build if they just knock everything down, which breaks my heart. But those heirs, have, those trees have economic value. We, we feel that we can criticize the Brazilians for letting their rainforest be bulldozed, but yet we're bulldozing and burning the trees that people have been growing for an ag ordinance. It drives me insane. Um, but the one that I think matters the most, again, to our commissioners is cleaning the water and um, the flood control and the erosion, well, climate regulation, but the water, it's our lakes that matter. So I'm going to skip down to lakes. Water gets the attention. This is the shore um, of Lake Mineola that has the nice beach. And this is before it was, um, whatever the word is, I'm looking, re refurbished, renovated, updated. Um, a lot of money was spent on it, still fairly natural. And the water is still fairly clean in this picture. Um, Marianne mentioned that they had an algal bloom in a couple years ago, I think now, and they were going to have a triathlon, and they got um, 
I think it was a grant, but funding from St. John's River Water Management District to do an innovative treatment where they dumped hydrogen peroxide um, coated pellets into the lake, which the hydrogen peroxide is evidently not detrimental. It breaks down into oxygen and hydrogen and doesn't impact the water. Or actually, it breaks down to water because it's hydrogen peroxide. It loses one of those O's, one of those oxygens, and just becomes water and oxygen. Um, but anyway, but it cost $1.9 billion, which while that was St. John's money, that's still taxpayer money, and that is obscene. But it's an example. There are other examples I could mention that we're doing in Lake County that we're spending millions of dollars on every year to try to remediate the problem that we've created with water. When I worked at Trout Lake, um, we did Project Wet Wild and TLT with the kids that came out to visit. The picture, um, I'll move to the next slide. <laughs> um, the picture that's on this slide is from that textbook or that, that training manual. But, and it illustrates what we, hopefully you all know, um, but water has certain physical properties. And those properties can't be changed just because somebody wants them to. They are part of our planetary system and um, they're not like the comprehensive plan. You can't change them just because you want to. <laughs> but the water infiltrates or percolates into the ground. It runs off the surface, um, you know, and that carries the nutrients or because, well, let me go to the next slide, the properties of water. Um, again, this, is, this too is part of how our planet works. This is not something that you can change because you want to. Water works the way it works. It has polarity. You know, it's a great solvent. Um, it can carry things in suspension, though it's the solvent part that it can allow things to get down to our aquifer. Um, it has heat capacity. It can help to cool or it can hold warm temperatures. Um, when we have something large like a lake, it impacts our water quality. It has high evaporation lakes. The sand miners are talking about putting um, this water after they mine into open pools. Um, Ryan Hart did a really good job. If you haven't seen his presentation on how the sand mines would impact Lake County's water, if they allow them to mine 100% of their property in the green swamp and then turn it into lakes, um, it would be detrimental to, to our lakes downstream. And our section of the green swamp, the watershed, and everybody is in a watershed. Some, you know, some part of your water that falls on your property goes, to, goes somewhere, maybe to the aquifer, maybe to the nearest river, lake, or stream. Um, but it goes somewhere. Um, some of it evaporates, but that's anyway. <laughs> anyway, lost my train of thought there. So, um, okay, so the water that so it should be going down, you know, that's trapped in those lakes now should be recharging Big Creek and going to Lake Louisa and on downstream to the Aquawaha and ultimately the St. John. So, and that's, and because Obviously, the Claremont chains of lakes have great economic value. All of our lakes have tremendous economic value. Um, the coastal areas have their beaches. They're their big draw. Our big draw is our lakes and our rural lifestyle. That's why the slogan for Lake County is real far to real close. And that's what people move here for. I feel like telling the Board of County Commissioners that they're just, they're committing false advertising because they're selling Lake County on a basis that they're rapidly trying to change. Okay, next slide. So there's a, some pretty pictures of what are both open space. Um, one is a horse pasture, but there's no fertilizer, um, only horse poop for added nu nutrients going on that pasture, and then um, sand hill. But those open spaces are critically important to water recharge, which is why um, in Lake County, Part of the, a big part of the reason is not just for, people, for the human component and um, peace of mind that what will happen next on your piece of property if you looked at the zoning map before you built there, but it's because many of those areas that are preserved have a tremendous impact on water quality. The, that dark blue area, the Ulaha Pop, Lake Apopka um, rural protection area, especially the U Ulaha area, that's a high water recharge area. If we, don't, if we don't let that water go into the ground and recharge our aquifer, we're going to be switching to surface water and that has all kinds of additional complications if we do that and it won't be as cheap. Um, 
the open space is a bargain. It's less expensive than letting the water decline till it looks like an algae-infested algae mess, and it's less expensive than some of the, the treatment facilities that we're using in Lake County. So um, what I hope you will do is, is, you know, our commissioners, I believe, want what's best for Lake County. But the people that are advocating to them, the people that are coming and bending their ears are the people who have a, have a financial monetary interest in what's going to happen next. And they are the ones that once a commissioner has made up their mind, it's, it's difficult for, for any of us to change our mind. So as Doug was saying, as Rob was saying, we need to get in there and we need to, though it's extremely difficult to find out what's going on, that was that has been one of my complaints to the commissioners that you have to check the advertising section of the Daily Commercial. That's the only place that they are obligated to advertise. And even then, if it's too late, it may not get put in. Um, I just checked with the county attorney on that. So, you know, I know there are, there's the new Lake County Conservation Council. There's a new ULAHA, Friends of ULAHA, because of the development coming out of Leesburg, and that's another issue. I don't know exactly what we legally, and when I say we, I mean those of us who care about Lake County, can do to help to stop that, because that is one of the drawbacks. If Lake County doesn't give a developer what they want, then they can be annexed into a city if the property touches, if the city um, lines the you know, um, zoning or I can't think of the word I want again. Anyway, if the city touches that property, then they can they can annex it. So, and that is part of why that is part of the justification the developer or the Board of County Commissioners use that sometimes they have to go ahead and do what the developer is asking because it's better than the alternative. But um, you need to be there. You need to you know, you need to join a group. You need to be there on your own. I am a member of groups, but. None of the groups that I'm involved in are really doing the same things that I'm doing. Not that I make that much difference, but, and I do it not because I want to, but because if I don't, I'll feel guilty. And that is a very uncomfortable feeling for me. So it's not that I'm a virtuous person. It's that I, I, I have to do it. Anyway, um, so it's not, this was, it's not up to the commissioners. It's up to us all. So. Um, oh, and you see my red note? Well, you can't see my red note because I just added it. I've added a note to this for myself. I, for one, am going to start going to planning and zoning meetings because by the time it's made it out of planning and zoning, it's already probably too done deal for it for a change to be impacted very easily. So you can join me there. Um, I have my email is my name, um, and it's Levon. Did you drop down to that one? So they can see how it's spelled. We're there. The yes, we're, we're, on, we're on the contact so, page. So you can email me. Um, you can email Doug. He's on the Board of County Commissioner's website. So you can track him down and email him. Rob can remain incognito a little bit more. Um, and um, I don't know, does Lake County Conservation Council have a Facebook page or a website yet? Igor is coming next, so he can answer that question. I hope I've made some sense and that I've given, made, either made you feel guilty or inspired you to try to make a difference yourself. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you, LaVon. Well done. Um, if you ever have a, time, a chance to do something for, for LaVon, please do so. Buy her lunch and ask her a question, and it'll be a really entertaining thing. Uh, LaVon is a great asset to, to Lake County. Um, so I want to just wrap it up here a little bit, and I want to tell everybody that you do not have to be a comprehensive planning nerd. You don't have to have your own copy of the flu map. It is available on the web. Um, I have one because I've spent a lot of time on it. Nowhere near as much time as Rob has. I just, I bow to Rob for all of the time he put into this, and he flat knows the plan. And the presentation tonight should give you a good idea of the kind of information that's available from some of the resources in our community. And uh, you can really make a difference by learning just a little bit and applying it effectively. Um, so to wrap up, uh, Kristen, can you bring up the, the map that I shared with you, which is the current flu flume map. Mine is not the current one. Um, so I'd like to bring that up as a shared screen if you can do that. I can, just hold on one second. Right, and uh, while, while he's bringing that up, I wanna have us focus on a couple of things. There are all these pretty colors on the map and you need to learn what those colors mean because Rob, 
spend a lot of time looking down to the parcel level. I mean, individual parcel to so my property, what is the current zoning on that and what should it be? And that's the, the, the map that we have. So Kristen, if you can focus on the Taveras area, I wanna kind of zoom in on Taveras. It's the center of the county. But if you look at this map, you'll see the light blue colors in Taveras and that's the lakes. You see that Lake Harris, Lake Eustis, Lake Dora, uh, in Lake County, we have an interesting situation in that you'll notice the red and blue, uh, sorry, red and black stripes. That indicates the road corridor that we know as 441. And you'll see how that threads along the lakes and it runs on this little spit of land that runs between the lakes. That's Lake County. We have a lake and we have a little bit of land and we've got to fit the houses, the schools, uh, the emergency facilities, government offices, all of the stuff and the roads on that little spit of land between the lakes. Everybody wants to be on the lake front. Everybody wants to be able to get to their houses. And so we've got to make these compromises of how we use the land. And so this is you know, the constraint that we have to do, deal with in Lake County. It's one of our great assets. It's one of our great challenges. Um, the, the state just recently abandoned the nutty road plan they called MCORs. Well, Lake County has a road problem in that it's difficult to get from there to there if you're going through Lake County because you've got to go on those narrow spits of land. That's a lot of congestion, especially in Taveras. So if you live in a place and you want to see what the future looks like, you ought to be able to look at this document, know what it means, and have a, some idea of what the future holds. You can't count on it, and we've talked about how they can be changed. And the problem is the cities versus the county. We face that a lot. There are a tremendous number of questions in the chat. And uh, I looked at, at what I could on those. And my God, we could, we could spend a lot of time talking about those. Um, I don't really know the best way to handle this because, man, there's a lot of good questions here. The first one Henry started off with, and he said, uh, basically, what's... Uh, What's the relationship between the cities and the counties? And I thought, Doug, maybe you might want to talk about the, some of the challenges that we're facing in county versus city and the, how the developers are effectively playing that game. You want to close the map so you can do that? Yeah, well, I think yeah, probably best, yes. But th that, that map document's available on the web. You can find it on the county's website. Um, it's a PDF. You can save it on your computer and learn what it means. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, well, we do we do see some the the, the cities the developers playing off the the city and the county you know against each other to see if they can get a better deal, but really at the end of the day, if you really want to maximize the value of your property, you need to get annexed by a city, because the you know unless you're down in four corners, there's there's private water and sewer down there, you know you're not going to get you know most of the Lake County property right now with the current regulations with over septic and well. You're probably not going to get more than three houses an acre, uh, pretty much anywhere in the unincorporated Lake County. But if you're part of a city, now all of a sudden you can get, you know, maybe six or, you know, or you could get, you know, a, an apartment building in there. So the value of the land then goes, you know, up rapidly once you once you annex into a city. So um, the 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 trick for us is how do we you know th those those individuals that wanted to live out in the country, and now the city is approaching them, and they have no standing, you know, in in going to a city meeting because they're not part of the city, and they can't vote in and out the the city council or commissioners, whatever they're called at that city. You know, they come to us for help, and and the you know the cities will get annoyed sometimes that we're putting our nose in their business. And, and again, we need the cities because we can't do workforce housing. We can't do high density stuff. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't recruit Kroger, right? That's in, in Groveland now. Uh, and, and, and I, you know, there was mention on economic development and that, and that is, I, I, I think that the side tangent, I, I do think that the, 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 the mood of the commission now is we can't grow our way out of, uh, a, a bad financial condition with more rooftops. So I think I think they're, they they finally are getting that and saying, you know, it's a Ponzi scheme, right? You, you take the money from the new development and you fix some old stuff. Well, it, it eventually you've built everything out and you're left holding the bag. And I and I think most of the commissioners get that now. And so we're trying to focus really on on getting you know some, some diversification of the revenue base 
away from, you know, just rooftops, you know, trying to get some more business and, uh, but it, it, it's a, you know, it's a problem, uh, you know, and, and some of the cities we have a better relationship with than, than others. And on that land use, actually, that's an interesting thing. So Groveland's in my district, my district's district one. So it goes from four corners all the way up the, the bottom of the three chain of lakes, west side of 27, the Claremont chain of lakes, West Claremont, Groveland, Mascot, Howie in the Hills, and all the way up to the west side of Leesburg. So it probably takes an hour and a half to drive my district, which is kind of nuts. Um, probably changed with the 2020 census with so much growth in, in Claremont. But one of the ways that Claremont dealt with this issue of, of, of developers wanting to come in and change, or Groveland rather, change the, you know, amend the comp plan as they said, we're, we're, we're scratching all of our of our, our rules. We're gonna now do hamlets and villages and they completely redesign their land use uh, regulations. And so now somebody comes in and says, well, we did X in the past, you know, you, you made that exception. It was like, well, we're not doing any of that anymore. You know, we started from scratch. And I almost wonder if we need to do that at the, at the county level because there's been so many exceptions and, and we've actually gone to battle and said, well, you can't make an exception. It's green swamp. No, no, we, we, we won't, you know, this is a one-off. Sure enough, the next developer came in, they cited that exception in their paper and, you know, or in their, in their and, and it went through. And so on and on it goes. So I, I kind of like Groveland's model, just start over again with, you know, here's our land use policy and this is where we're gonna, and there, and, there, and Groveland, the city has actually set aside 50% of the entire landmass for for green space which is good yeah yeah thank you thank you doug uh there's another question somebody's asking about when will the workshop happen on the mining do you know that date off the top of your head uh, if not then we'll publish it but i you mean the uh, workshop on the mine i'm not the, so, sand, so, the sand mines wanting to go to 100% of their property. Yeah, so they came to the board uh, early on in my term, a second go around. They, they'd already come once before. And we, we have to, I think, make a decision sometime in June. The state says we have to decide. Why the state doesn't decide, you'd think it's a green swamp state critical concern, but it's up to the commission. So I, I don't know that there's going to be a workshop certainly it's going to come back to the commission i think it's sometime in june so obviously uh you know commissioner parks and i are opposed to you know giving full access to the sand mining industry the green swamp and uh, uh kirby wanted to kirby smith wanted to table it because he wanted more information so that's where the vote stood last time and so we're, we're, we're hopefully he's getting his information. I, I actually asked at one of the last meetings, do we want to get an independent hydrologist? Because go figure the sand mining industry's hydrologist said, oh yeah, you can mine the green swamp. There'll be no ill effects. And of course the Lake County Water Authority, you know, Ron had something different to say. And so um, we may be getting a third, you know, an independent hydrologist. I don't know where that stands, but I, I had staff looking at that. Well, and, and, and in all fairness, if, if, the, if the sand miners get to mine 100%, shouldn't every owner in the green swamp be able to develop 100% of their property also? Agreed. Agreed. I mean, you know, fair is fair, right? <laughs> so um, uh, another question, uh, Deborah Shelley is asking, how does the county respond to requests for annexation in rural protection areas? Uh, there seem to be no protections. Um, I... I that, that's a tough one. So I get those emails, you know, especially lately here, almost, you know, uh, almost every day and, and phone calls. And, you know, I, I, I go to the, to the county attorney and I'm like, you know, please, Melanie, isn't there something we can do? And, you know, most of the time, there's not much we can do about it. Um, but there was one that just came up and it was actually, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't contiguous and it was outside of the original agreed upon boundary or the boundary, it was a different, there's two different boundary agreements. Uh, Rob, you can maybe talk to that. There's the- There's, there's the, a joint planning, there's a joint planning agreement. Yeah. And there's the, and there's the regular boundaries of the city versus the county. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it kind of depends, you know, I think we have a different deal with Eustis say than we do with Leesburg, um, which is- so They I were all negotiated. They were all negotiated individually for those who have them. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I have got a ton, ton to learn on that, but 
know what all i can say is you know send me an email and i'll run it through the attorney and we'll do what we can do but i i i, I wish i had a better answer okay and uh, someone's asking rob can you explain a little more about the groveland effort uh, the 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 plebiscite to limit groveland how that came about the referendum um <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, qu quickly, I guess, you know, when, when we found out that they wanted to annex into the green swamp at four houses or five houses per acre and bring it into the city of Groveland, we were grasping at straws trying to figure out what we could do to impact it and stop it. So one of the things that Florida provides uh, are citizen initiatives and the state at the state level of uh, in, in legislation, citizens can do initiatives in cities to get things put onto the ballot if the city won't put them onto the ballot for an election cycle. So we, we went house to house through Groveland uh, with a big group and got enough signatures to put it onto the ballot in Groveland to say, you know, that they're gonna protect, basically they're gonna protect the green swamp from higher density development and keep it at one house per five maximum density um so that that got that got challenged all the way up to the election it got onto the election ballot you know it's 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 like i look at it a lot of times we're a microcosm of what you see uh in the federal election of people challenging things you know as step by step and they challenged our step by step we got it on um it passed by 80 percent they challenged it again after that um, and we ended up, uh, uh, you know, having a settlement agreement that they would not expand into, uh, into the, into the green swamp. They spent a tremendous amount of money on attorney fees. We raised over a hundred thousand dollars for attorney fees. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's been pretty good since that time, other city, we learned that from what some other cities in South Florida were doing that. Uh, our citizens groups in South Florida. And uh, we did that. Uh, there were a few more after us. And then uh, the legislatures, of course, changed the law at the state level. So you cannot do citizens initiatives in cities to change a comprehensive plan. So uh, they closed <laughs> they close that down. Um, and uh, because of the way things are incorporated, it, you, you can't do it as easily at a county uh, unless a county is a charter county. Uh, at, like you can at a city because we actually had our had our stuff put into the charter of the city. Our, our, our county is not a charter county. Orange County is a charter county. Um, typically, as counties grow and as Lake County grows, um, they would transition more into a charter county. Uh, and Lake County's had such a tremendous growth that I expect in the next 10 years or 15 years or something, it probably will. But uh, but currently, you can't do that in Lake at the county level like you can at a city level. And but there are, you know, we have a great uh, a few people up on the commission now. Uh, Doug is a great leader up there. He's been talking a lot of sense into everybody. So if something needed to go on to a ballot for election, I think now is a good is a good time to be able to do those kind of things to have a, at least a chance to be able to get them put on. Uh, whereas before, you know, there was not even a chance, uh, you know, two years ago or a year ago before that. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, so that's, that's kind of how, how it rolled out. It was, a, it was a few years of really putting all of your energy into, uh, into trying to make a difference. And, and it did make a big difference. Um, and I wish we still had citizens initiatives to be able to do that now with some of the things going on. Well, that's why we don't, is because we would do stuff and we can't be allowed yeah. to do things. That, that right. the you learn that. Um, so right. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna ask well, the can, can I can I jump in? So so I'm I'm seeing a lot of stuff coming in on annexations, and I know it's a huge topic. I might throw it out there to, to your group um, that, that maybe we could get a commission level workshop going on annexations and the the, the, the city county relationships and the, you know, the boundary areas and, and, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to, to, to get everybody in a room together and, and go over that again, a, again, to, to Rob's point now's, 
a, a much better time than than in the past. And so maybe yeah. you know, with all the pressure and everything going on, because honestly, if we come up with a, a a a good working relationship and and you know everybody's reasonably happy, it makes our lives better. We we're, we're, we're then we're not you know being traffic cops, you know, trying to solve battles. So it's just something I just want to throw out there to the group. Yeah, well, uh, we bet, I, Christian, I see your hand. I just want to make one little comment here. And so the, the question was, how can we change the relationship agreement between the cities and the county uh, re-annexations? And this is a chat question. And I will say, that's why we're meeting today is so that people can understand you need to be involved in the process, not just waiting until the yellow sign goes up, but you need to be talking to your government agencies. That is, you need to talk to your city commissioners, know their, all their names. They need to know your name. Same for the county commissioners. It's not hard to do. You go to a meeting and introduce yourself. They get to know your face. And if they see your face in their meetings on a regular basis, it does change their behavior. And that's a really critical thing. Christian, I saw your hand go up. and uh, so. Thank you very much, Igor. Um, Doug and Rob I, and Levon, I want to thank all of you uh, for being willing to be out here uh, be recorded live on television, uh, live on internet, uh, and share your thoughts. Um, just, I just want to mention uh, that I've been living through an annexation dispute and issue in Leesburg. I live in Island Lakes, and we've been looking at a relatively small development right behind us. Uh, and I was involved, and I actually shot a, a drone a video that we sent out to show people uh, the changes and, and highlighted the, the zoning and the annexation laws around a specific project. Uh, and recently, as Doug, you've kind of uh, alle uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Alluded, Alluded to. <laughs> We're all having late night brains fog. Um, there's some very large scale um, owned by Dubai uh, property owners who are attempting to come in and capture and you, you protect the green swamp because of its hydrological significance. There's a right. huge area which the county recognized, which is uh, in Yalaha, uh, which, right. is, which is labeled as agriculture, which was old orchards. Uh, but the real significance of that area is that it's elevated and it's the source headwaters for a number of springs, uh, a lot of water wells that go into people's homes, uh, as well as being a rural area. Uh, so I've been fighting that with a group of people uh, for about a year and a half now. Um, and we ran right into great support at the city of Leesburg until they actually uh, started having the cigar backroom meetings with the developers. Uh, exactly. And all of a sudden all the votes flipped uh, and they were doing everything in their power tactically to try to keep the public under control uh, rather than letting things go to real decisions. Um, I, and I also want to just mention that I'm a retired uh, growth management director. Uh, my last job was Pasco County, which is the fastest growing county in Florida. Um, I've got 40 years experience uh, in, in four different states um, working on these issues. And I've done comp plans and zoning ordinances and annexation agreements. Uh, and I'm a hydrogeologist by training. Um, so I'm now in Lake County, retired. And I came here because of its all the points that you raised, Doug, <clears throat> and you, Rob, raised as to why we come to Lake County. Um, and this is an incredibly unique place that can have growth, but it needs to totally transform its growth rules in order to achieve right. its objectives. Um, right. You know that a lot of people have been talking about conservation, zoning, and subdivision. Uh, Randall Arendt has been used in a lot of meetings. Uh, Randall is a friend of mine, and I was actually quoted in his books 25 years ago um, as an expert in this area. So we need to step it up. And the approach that Igor and Rob and Levon talk about in terms of overwhelming the local elector, uh, elected officials, making them aware of who, they're really, who their constituency really is. And it's not the people giving money for election campaigns. Uh, and it's not the development community, even though they're in your ear with paid consultants and lawyers every week. Um, it's the people who live here, have retired here, work here, have raised their families here, uh, and are trying to enjoy what is the central Florida lifestyle. 
And some of those folks are retirees that come here from somewhere else, but there's still a large number of folks, especially in Yalaha, who are multi-generational families who are trying to hold on to the traditions and the culture that is here in Central Florida. Um, there's a lot of areas to improve, but we really need to jump on this one directly. Uh, and it's gonna be foot, foots on the ground and people in the seats at the, at the County Planning Commission meetings uh, and at the Board of County Commissioners meetings and in the city of Leesburg meetings. Um, and I, I guess, Rob, I, this is my way of volunteering to you and Levon to you uh, to get more active in your organizations. Uh, and Doug, I look forward to getting to know you much better. Um, I like the way you think. And I also am a little bit concerned about some of the myths that you seem to have already adopted and which are a result of having to sit in the seat you sit in, <laughs> the Board of County Commissioners. It is not an easy place to live. Um, I've worked for folks like you, again, for 40 years. And uh, I have deep, deep respect for the amount of effort and work you put into the jobs that you do. Uh, but we do need to hold you accountable, as well as all of your fellow elected officials. Please so thank do. you. Thank you for being willing to do this tonight. Um, if I could chime in here, I've been watching the chat all night and we have many, many questions, as Igor said, in the chat box. But we're also going on time here. We've been at this for over an hour and a half. And I think we, it might be time to call it unless people really want to stay. We're losing people also as we go along. I'll leave it uh, to uh, Russ if he wants to continue or, or not. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, I, I, uh, look, what time is it? It's about quarter of. Um, I think some of the, we do have a lot of questions, but I noticed some of them uh, overlap a bit. And um, I'm hoping that some of them have been already answered by, because of that. And, and um, so I, <clears throat> what I would uh, encourage you to do with these questions is to, um, to save them and to uh, realize that these might be great questions to raise at a county commission meeting <laughs> where, uh, where that you go to and, and um, uh, uh, sit in a seat and um, influence some of the county or city commissioners. If there's Maybe one message that we heard today, time. that was it, right? Um, you need to do this. You need to, you need yeah. Yeah. To, to do to go to your city and county commission meetings and um, let people let these people know how you feel. I think we should wrap it up at this point. Uh, and so I would like to thank uh, Rob Kelly and Doug Shields and Igor Emery and Levon Silvernell for doing this panel. Uh, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of interest in this. Uh, and um, Unitarian Universalist community of Lake County is very, very happy that uh, we were able to provide this for you. So I would like to um, thank also um, Jane Hepting and uh, the, the UU Social Justice and Environmental Committee who, act, who thought about these programs and make them possible. And, to, and I also need to thank our technical team um, if you were here at 6.30 as I was, you realize how much these people do, how much they sweat. And uh, uh, believe me, it's no easy task to do these programs. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Tech Committee, so much. And I re remind you that we have one more program in our series on the environment. And so be sure to tune in again on June 13th. I believe that's the date for when we will be talking about reducing our carbon footprint. Uh, and uh, our speaker then will be Dr. Brittany C. Sellers. Uh, Dr. Sellers is the Assistant Director of the City of Orlando's Office of Sustainability and Resilience. It's quite a title. Um, and um, this, the uh, City of Orlando aims to have its municipal operations be greenhouse gas neutral by 2030. Um, if I'm still around at that point, um, I'm, I'm hoping they succeed. 
And I see that. Dr. Sellers will, Sellers will give us ideas on how Lake County can work toward that same kind of, of a goal. So until then, um, I will extinguish our chalice now with the words of Aldo Leopold, who's one of my heroes. Uh, he's the author of Sand County Almanac. He was a professor and environmentalist in Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin. So Aldo Leopold said, to those devoid of imagination, a blank place on the map is a useless waste. To others, it's the most valuable part of the map. So hope to see you again. I'll extinguish our chalice and good night. Good night. <laughs>